everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Nikki with MontanaCrochetCreations.com. In today's video, we're going to be making this really cute amigurumi crochet snake plant here. I'm making this for my grandson's nursery, um, and I think he turned out really cute. So what we're going to need for this project today is some number four worsted weight yarn. I chose to use a light gray color and then a dark gray color. I used the Red Heart Super Saver for both of these colors here. I believe this one is actually called light gray and this one is called dark heathered gray. You're also going to need like a dark green and a light green. So also the Red Heart Super Saver yarn and this is forest green and I believe this is I can't remember what it was called. I think, was it green apple or something like that maybe? I cannot remember. You'll also need a couple of safety eyes. Um, I chose to use the safety eyes because this is going to be for my grandson and I don't want them coming undone. But if you have buttons or if you have beads or you can even just crochet the little eyes and attach them on would be great. Um, and then you'll need some fiber fill for the inside of the little crochet pot here. So then you're also going to need a number four um, or a four millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a pair of craft scissors for clipping your yarn tails. And you're going to need a yarn needle for weaving in those ends. And that's everything that you'll need. You won't need very much yarn. Um, so one skein of each will be totally fine. And it's turned out to be a really quick and really fun project. So go ahead and grab all of your supplies and we'll get started on this Amigurumi crochet snake plant. Okay, so let's get started on this Amigurumi crochet snake plant. And I don't know if that's how you say it, but I think that's how it's said. So I could be wrong. Um, so what we're going to do is I've got my light gray yarn here and my crochet hook. And so we're going to start with our magic circle. And if you don't know how to do a magic circle, I'll link that in the right hand corner for you. Um, and it'll provide step by step instructions of how I like to do my magic circle. But there's a million different ways to do it. But this is the way that I usually do it. So I'll link that in the right hand corner for you. And we're going to place six single crochet inside this magic circle here. We've got one, two, three four, five, and now we have six. And so that's round one for this amigurumi um, houseplant that we're doing here. So I'm going to pull that tail tight and we're just going to come over and we are going to slip stitch to that very first single crochet that we put in. Now there's two ways to do this. I'm a chain one and crocheting back into the chain one space kind of a person. But if you don't want to do that, you can use a stitch marker and continue around in your circle. So I'm going to chain one and then go back into my chain one space here. So for round two, we're going to place two single crochet in every single stitch all the way around. So at the end of round two, you will have 12 single crochet. So go ahead and work your two single crochet in each stitch all the way around. And then I'll meet you back here in a few minutes and we'll get started on round three. I finished round two and I slip stitched to that first single crochet and then chained one. I'm going to go back into that chain one space. So for round three, we're going to start with a single crochet in this first stitch here. And then we're going to place two single crochet in this very next stitch. And this is going to be our repeat pattern for round three. So we've got one single crochet in the next stitch like that and then we have two single crochet in this very next stitch here so you're going to work that all the way around when you come back to the beginning of round three you're going to slip stitch into that first single crochet right there and then chain one or move your stitch marker up at the end of round three you should have a total of 18 stitches for this for round four what we're going to do is place a single crochet in that chain one space or where you left your stitch marker off. And then we're going to place another single crochet in that same stitch. So we're starting with an increase stitch. Then we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches here. 
Then we're going to single crochet twice in the same stitch coming up here. So that's our repeat pattern for this. So two single crochet in one stitch and one single crochet in the next two stitches. And you're gonna repeat that all the way around for round four. When you get back to the beginning of round four, again, you're going to slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet right there and either move your stitch marker up or chain one. At the end of round four, you should have a total of 24 single crochet. For round five, we're gonna place one single crochet in that chain one space or where your stitch marker is at. And then we're gonna go back into that same stitch and place another single crochet. So our increase. Now we're going to single crochet in the next three stitches, just like that. And then our next stitch is going to contain two single crochet. And that's our repeat pattern. So two single crochet in one stitch, one single crochet in the next three stitches, all the way around. And again, when you get back to the beginning of round five, you are going to slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet and either move your chain or your stitch marker up or chain one and um, single crochet back into that chain one. So at the end of round five, you should have a total of 30 single crochet. So let's get started on round six. So we're gonna go into that chain one space or the space where your stitch marker is at. And we're gonna place two single crochet and then we're going to single crochet in the next four stitches. So this basically right here, grab a little more yarn, is creating our increase with every single row. So it's making our circle get larger and larger here. So there's, make sure I didn't go, okay, did I go? No, I didn't. Okay, I had to make sure I didn't go into that one stitch where the chain one was at and do three on accident. So there's two, three, and four. Now we are going to place two single crochet again in this next stitch and then four single crochet in the neck or one single crochet in the next four stitches. And that's our repeat pattern. So two single crochet and then one single crochet in the next four. I'm gonna go all the way around with that. Again, coming back to the beginning and slip stitching to the top of that very first single crochet and then either chaining one or moving your stitch marker up. At the end of round six, you should have a total of 36 single crochet. For round five, we're going to go and place two single crochet in our first stitch here. There's one and we've got two. And now we're going to single crochet in the next five stitches. So we've got one, two, three, four, and now we have five right there. And then we're gonna place two single crochet in this next stitch right here. And that's your repeat pattern. So two, two single crochet in one stitch, one single crochet in the next five stitches. And then you're gonna work your way all the way around, again, coming over to the very first single crochet and slip stitching, and then either chaining one or moving your stitch marker up. At the end of round seven, you should have a total of 42 single crochet. Round eight, we're gonna place two single crochet in our first stitch here. And then we're going to single crochet in the next six stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and we have six. And now we're gonna place two single crochet in this next stitch right here. And then that is our repeat pattern. So two single crochet in your one stitch and then one single crochet in the next six stitches. We're still gonna come around to the beginning, slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet and either chain one or move our stitch marker up. At the end of round eight, you should have 48 stitches here. Moving on to round nine, we're going to place two single crochet in that first stitch. Again, continuing with an increase for this round. And now we are going to place one single crochet in the next seven stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and we have seven right here. And now we are going to place 
one more single crochet or two single crochet in this next stitch right here. So there's one and two. And then we're going to repeat that pattern of two single crochet and then one single crochet in the next stitch, seven stitches all the way around. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet and then we're either going to chain one or we're going to move our stitch marker up. So go ahead and finish that and I'll meet you back here in a few minutes and we'll get started on round 10. We get started on working on round 10, but for round 10, we're no longer going to do increases, but what we're going to do is start working in the back loop only of this. So that way we can start building the base to start working on the walls. So let me zoom in here. And if you look at this stitch, you see your normal stitch has kind of like a front one here, just like this, and then there's this back one right there. So typically your stitch makes like this little V pattern right there. Normally you work through both of those, but today for this round on 10, we're not working through both, we're working in this back stitch right here, and that's called our back loop. So we're gonna be working in that. So what we're going to do is we're coming into this stitch here where I single, or I um, chained one, and I'm going into that back stitch right there and I'm going to single crochet. And I'm gonna go into the very next one and I'm just going to single crochet. And what's that going, that's going to do is start allowing us to start creating our walls here. So this is the base of our Amagurami um, snake plant that we have here. And now we're, if you flip it over this way, you'll see that we're gonna start working on our wall portion of it. So keep working your um, single crochets in the back loops all the way around. When you come back to the beginning of round 10, you're going to slip stitch and then chain one, and then I'll meet you back and then we'll get started on the last few rows that we need for um, this little crochet plant here. So I just finished round 10 and you can see um, we've got like our little lip here that's from the bottom and it's now creating this little wall right here. I'm going to start working up on that way. Um, just creating the little walls of this little pot right here for this Omagurumi um, crochet snake plant. So what we want to do is for rounds 11 through round 20, we are just going to go back in working through both loops now and we're just going to single crochet. So now um, we're no longer working in that back loop only. So we're going through both of them. And we're just going to place one single crochet around in every single stitch until we're at the end, get back to the beginning of round 20. At the end of round 20, you'll still have 54 single crochet. And then you're going to slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet and then chain one or move your stitch marker up. So go ahead and continue working your single crochets all the way around until you are done with round 20. And then I'll meet you back for round 21. So I finished round 20 and we have our little um, base here. So basically our little flower pot. And as you can see, our walls um, have worked their way all the way up to the top. So what we're going to do for round 21 is we're going to work in the front loop only of this round. And this first one right here is going to be kind of tricky to grab. So we're going to work in that front loop only. So like last time we worked in this back loop right here. You can see that now we're going to be working in just this front stitch right here. So we're working in the front loops only. So we're going to place one single crochet in every single stitch all the way around of the front loop only there. So go ahead and do that. Um, and then when you come back to the beginning of round 21, I want you to either slip stitch and move your stitch marker up or chain one, slip stitch and then chain one. So go ahead and work your single crochet in the front loops only of every single round. And then I'll meet you back here and we'll work on our last round of the flower pot, which is round 22. So for round 22, we're going to go into the back loop of the previous round. So now we're gonna work in the back loops only. So remember, we're grabbing that back stitch right there and we're just going to single crochet in that back loop only of that. So we're gonna keep working around single crocheting in the back loop only of this um, round right here. And then at the very, when we come back around, we're going to 
slip stitch to our first single crochet. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and fasten off. And if you have any yarn tails, go ahead and weave those in. Um, but you should only have a couple of yarn tails. You should have the one from when we created our magic circle, and then you'll have this yarn tail right here. But what this is going to do by working in the front loop and then the back loop, it's going to create a nice little detail right here that's gonna be kind of like the front top lid of the flower pot. So go ahead and work that all the way around and I'll meet you back here and we'll get started on attaching the little um, safety eyes and doing the mouth. And then we'll start working on the dirt portion of this um, crochet little plant here. Okay, so we're gonna count down to um, between row 14 and 15. So here's row 14, there's 15. And we're going to place our safety eye here. And it's got those little, these little backs on them. And I'm going to put those on off camera because they can be a little bit of a struggle. But I've placed my eye and then I think I'm going to go over about, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, about six stitches in between. I'm going to place my second safety eye. And I like the way that that looks right there. So I think that that'll be fine. Um, so I've got my little safety eyes there. So then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab a piece of either black or dark gray or some sort of yarn like that. And then we'll come in and do the little mouth portion of this. But first I wanna go off camera and snap these little back pieces onto this um, these safety eyes so that way they don't come apart because I'm going to, um, give this to my daughter so that way she can put it in my little grandson's little nursery because they love house plants. So um, go ahead and get those back snapped on and then I'll meet you back here in just a few minutes. All right, so let's get started on the mouth of this. Um, let's see, so I think I'm going to go and come possibly just below right here. So one stitch over and one row down and I'm just going to come in just like this and I think I'm just gonna go down one more stitch and kind of at an angle. So then that way it's kind of at a little bit of a diagonal, just like that, see? And then I'm gonna go back up to this um, stitch right here, right next to it. And then I'm going to come in and do the same thing. And just kind of go in at an angle right there. And now we've created our little mouth for our, um, I'm a, I'm a gourami um, crochet plant. I still have a hard time saying that. So I want to go back in and kind of go over it twice because I want to make it a little more predominant and stand out a little bit. So just like that. And then I'm going to come back over this side right here and go in. Who else has a problem saying I'm a gourami? Because I know I sure do. So, um. Just leave comments down below if you have an issue with it as well. So now what I'm going to do is I've got this and I'm just going to come in and just tie these into a knot. This is going to be inside our little crochet plant here and it's going to be um, just like that here if you can see. And we want to just tie that into a knot and then I'm just going to clip it off a little bit. I'm not going to clip it off super short but I'm just going to clip it a little bit so then that way but it's going to be covered with our polyfill and then it's gonna have the top on there. So I'm not gonna worry about weaving these yarn tails in because it's not necessary. And so there we go. There's the little face portion of our little pot here for our snake plant. And as you can see in the back, I like attached all of the little safety um, things on there for the eyes. So they're not gonna come off and be a choking hazard or anything like that. So. Let's uh, get started on the dirt portion for this cute little amigurumi crochet snake plant. All right, so we're going to start the little top portion and I'm using a dark gray because I want mine to look more like um, the moss sort of stuff that you put on the top of a plant instead of dirt. So I'm just gonna use a dark gray instead of brown. So we are starting our magic circle just like we did at the very beginning. And then we're going to place six single crochet inside this magic circle here. Four, well, geez, five, and we have six right here. So we're just gonna pull our yarn tail tight, and then we're just gonna come over 
and slip stitch to the top of that very first single crochet right here. And then we're going to start working in the round just like we did for our crochet pot. So I'm going to chain one and go back into that chain one space and I'm going to place two single crochet. And then I'm going to place two single crochet in every single stitch all the way around. So at this point you'll have 12 single crochet at the end of this. So when you get back around to the beginning, make sure that you slip stitch to the top of that very first single crochet. And then again, either chain one or use your stitch marker and move it up. For round three, we're going to place one single crochet in that chain one space. And then we're gonna go over to our next stitch and place two single crochet. So this is very similar to the bottom of that pot that we did. Uh, because you want this to be close to the same size. So now we have one single crochet and now we have two single crochet. So go ahead and complete, com continue to work that around to the beginning. Make sure you slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet right here and then chain one or move your stitch marker up. At the end of round three, you're going to have a total of 18 single crochet. For round four, we're going to place two single crochet in our chain one space or our very next stitch, if you're using stitch markers, and then we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches. And that is our repeat pattern for round four. So two single crochet in one stitch and one single crochet in the next two stitches. Again, you're going to work your way around and then slip stitch to the top of that very first single crochet right here and then chain one and, uh, or slip stitch and then chain one or move your stitch marker up. At the end of round four, you should have 24 stitches. For round five, we're going to place two single crochet in this chain one space here. And then we're going to single crochet in the next three stitches. And that's our repeat pattern for round five. So two single crochet in one stitch, one single crochet in three stitches. So when you get all the way back around, again, you're still slip stitching to the top of that first single crochet and then chaining one or moving your stitch marker up. At the end of round five, you should have a total of 30 stitches. And as you see, we're starting to work our way around and it's starting to get bigger and bigger. By the time we're done, it'll be about the same size as the top of our little flower pot that we have. For round six, we're placing two single crochet in that chain one space. And now we're going to single crochet in the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and we have four. And now we're placing two single crochet in this next stitch. And then we're gonna do one single crochet in the next four stitches and repeat that all the way around. We're gonna slip stitch to the top of this first single crochet and chain one. At the end of round six, you should have 36 stitches. For round seven, we're placing two single crochet in our chain one space. And we're still gonna continue with an increase for this round. And now we're going to single crochet in the next five stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, and now we have five. And then we're gonna place two single crochet in this next stitch here. And then we're gonna repeat that all the way around until you get back to the beginning of round five still slip stitching and chaining one or moving your stitch, mark, stitch marker up. At the end of round seven, you should have a total of 42 single crochet. For round eight, we're placing two single crochet in that chain one space. And then we're going to place one single crochet in the next six stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and now we have six. And then we're gonna place two single crochet in this next stitch, and then that's our repeat pattern. So go ahead and continue working all the way around till you get back to the beginning of round six. Repeat your process of chaining one, slip stitching and chaining one. At the end of round eight, you should have a total of 48 stitches. Round eight, we're going to place two single crochet in our chain one space. And this is our last um, round here. So at the end of, or not round eight, sorry, round nine. 
At the end of round nine, we're going to fasten off, but we're gonna leave a really long yarn tail so that way we can attach this to the top of our flower pot when the time comes. So we placed our two single crochet, and now we're going to single crochet in the next seven stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and we have seven. And now we're gonna place two single crochet in this next stitch, and that's our repeat pattern. So we're just gonna go all the way around, um, placing our one single crochet in the seven stitches and two single crochet in the next. And then we're gonna come over, we're going to slip stitch to the top and then we're going to fasten off and then um, make sure you leave that long yarn tail. And then I'm going to go in and weave in this yarn tail in the back here that was made from our magic circle. So go ahead and finish that and I'll meet you back in a few minutes. All right, we're gonna get started on the smaller leaves of this amigurami um, crochet snake plant right here. So what we're going to do is we're gonna start, I'm gonna use my dark green color here, and we're just gonna create our slip stitch. And we're going to chain two here. So we've got one and two. Now we're going to come over into this second chain from our hook, and we are going to place a single crochet just like that. Now for row two, we are going to chain one, turn our work, and now as we turn our work, you can see we've got two stitches here. So we're going to go into our first stitch and we're gonna place two single crochet. So there's one, and then now we're gonna go back in and place our second one. And it's really hard to see right now, but pull that. I think I was kind of a little off stitch on that. Like my yarn, you could tell, was not fully all the way through. So let's try this again. So we're going to go into that chain one space and we're going to place two single crochet. So there we go. So there's one and now we're going to go back in and place two. So this round is our increase round or row. And now, now we're going to go into our next stitch here. And we're going to place two more single crochet. And so it's going to be a little fiddly right here because you're dealing with such a small space. So there we go. So there's one and then now we're going to go back in and place one more. Just like that. There we go. Now we're going to chain one and turn our work. For row three, we're just going to place a single crochet in each stitch across. So you should have a total of four single crochet. I'm going to go all the way to the end. Two. Oops, sorry if I was out of shot there. Here's three, and this yarn is very, it like almost unravels a little when you're crocheting with it. Three, and then now we're gonna make sure we don't forget to grab this last little stitch right here. A lot of times it's really hard to see it because that's was where we did our chain one and turned. And then now we have four. And then I chained one and turned my work. For row five, we're gonna chain one, turn, or, or we're gonna single crochet in that chain one, and then we're going to single crochet in the next six stitches. This is five, and so for a total of six stitches, and that is six. We're gonna chain one and turn our work right there. For row six, we're going to start with two single crochet in that chain one space. So our first one, now our second single crochet. And now we are going to single crochet in the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. And then we're going to end with a single crochet in our last stitch. So two single crochet. So there's one and two. And at this po point, you should have a total of eight single crochet. So go ahead and chain one and turn your work. Row seven, we're just gonna place a single crochet in that chain one space like that and then we're going to single crochet all the way across so you should still have a total of eight stitches for row eight we're going to place one single crochet in every stitch across so for eight single crochet and we're actually going to continue that through row nine so for two more rows we're going to just place one single crochet all the way across here so at the end of row nine 
make sure you chain one and turn your work and then I will meet you back. For row 10, we're going to chain one, turn our work, and then we're gonna place one single crochet in each stitch across, still for eight stitches. And we're gonna do that for a total of, a total of seven rows. So there we go. So go ahead and repeat that for seven more rows and you're gonna do that all the way to row 16. Once you're done with row 16, I'll meet you back and we'll get started on the rest of this small leaf. So for rounds 17 and 18, we're still gonna place one single crochet in each stitch across. Then once we get to round 19, then we're gonna start working on decrease and it's gonna start narrowing the bottom of this snake plant leaf off. So go ahead and finish 17 and 18. And I'll meet you back here in just a few minutes. All right, so for round 19, what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet these first two stitches together. So we're inserting our hook and we're drawing up our loop. We are not going to yarn over and go through these two loops again. Instead, we're gonna go right directly into our very next stitch and draw up our loop. And then now you have your three stitches, right? Or your three loops right there on your hook. Now we're gonna yarn over and pull through all three. We just single crocheted those two stitches together right there. So what we're going to do next is we're going to single crochet in the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and then now we have four. And then these last two stitches right here, we're going to single crochet together. So again, drawing up our loop and then going straight into that very next stitch, then yarning over, and then going through all three of those loops and then chain one and turn your work. And you can see it kind of is starting to round that off a little bit. Row 20, we're gonna go into our chain one space and we're going to single crochet across the top here. So you should have a total of six single crochet by the time you are done with row 20, just like that. So there's six and we're gonna chain one and turn our work. What we're going to do next is we're going to take this light color green and we're going to attach it just like this. And we're going to start working along the edges of this leaf. So I'm just going to attach my green color. And what I'm going to do is come over and clip my dark green yarn. And I like to tie my two strings of yarn in a knot and then at this point work over those yarn tails. Um, if you don't want to work over the yarn tails, that's fine. You can weave those in towards the very end when you're done with this, but I'm going to work over the yarn tails. So I'm going to go into that spot where we just attached and I'm going to place a single crochet just like that. And now I'm going to come along the edge here and kind of just grab anywhere that looks like there would be a stitch or could be a stitch. And I'm going to just single crochet all along the edge. So this is going to create the light colored edges of our snake plant leaves here. So just like this, I'm still working over those edges. And see right here, you can see these edges, there's not really a stitch along the edges. So that's why I'm just kind of going in and grabbing wherever it looks like there might be somewhere for it to go. And then work your way all along the um, side here, along the top, and then work your way all the way back down and then on the bottom and over here. And then once you're done with that, then I'll meet you back and um, you'll have to make two of these. So once you're done with your second of the small one, then I'll meet you and then we'll get started on the larger uh, snake plant leaves. So I'm done with my first leaf. And this is what you'll, it should look like. Um, if you wanted to, you could have changed colors throughout here to kind of give it that little variation of like the snake plant leaf, but I didn't. I just left it one color and then did the light around. And then make sure you leave yourself a long enough tail for attaching at the very end. And I know I said to do two of these, but I actually looked back at my notes and there's actually, you need to make three of these small ones. So go ahead and make your three small leaves and then I'll meet you back and we'll get started on our medium sized leaves. Let's get started on our medium sized leaves and we're gonna make four of these. So we're gonna start here with our slip stitch. And it's going to be very similar to the way that we did our small leaves, except we're just gonna add a few rows. So we're going to chain two here, 
And we're going to come back into that first chain. And we're going to place our single crochet. And we're going to chain one, turn our work. Now we're going to go into these two stitches here. And we're going to place two single crochet in each stitch. If I can get this turned around. Um, this part will be a little fiddly just because it's a little tight, but, and there's only the two stitches to work with. So we're going to place two stitches in both of these. So there was two. Then we go into our next stitch and we're going to place two single, single crochet. And there's our last one. And now we have four stitches across. So we're going to chain one, turn our work, and we're going to place one single crochet in these four stitches. There's two, three, and we have four. Now we're going to chain one, turn our work, and we're going to place two single crochet in this first stitch. So there's one and two. And then we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches. And then we're going to place two single crochet in this last stitch. So that leaves you with six single crochet. So we're going to chain one, turn our work, and place one single crochet in each stitch across here. So there's three, five, and we have six. Now we're going to do one last increase. We're gonna chain one, turn our work. In this first stitch, we're gonna place two single crochet. So there's one and two. And then we're gonna single crochet in the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, and then we're going to place two single crochet in this very last stitch here. We're going to chain one, turn our work, and now for a total of 15 rows, we are going to place one single crochet in each stitch across, still having a total of eight single crochet. So go ahead and finish your 15 rows. And when you're done with row 15 of your single crochet, then I will meet you back and we'll talk about the decrease and we'll get started on this border of our medium leaf for this amigurumi snake plant. So I'm done with row 15. So I'm going to chain one, turn my work. And what we're going to do um, with our next row is we're going to single crochet these first two stitches together. So we inserted our hook and drop our loop. We're gonna go right directly into that next stitch again and drop our loop. Then we're gonna yarn over and pull through all three of those loops there. Then we're going to single crochet in four stitches. Two, three, four. And now we're going to single crochet these very last two stitches here together. So just inserting into that second stitch, drawing up our loop and pulling through all three of those loops there. There we go. And now we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet in every stitch all the way across. When we get to that very last stitch, we're going to switch to our green, our light green yarn so we can do our edging. So there's two, three, four, five, and we have six. And I'm not going to finish mine. So I'm gonna come over and I'm just going to clip my green, dark green yarn and I'm going to grab my light green yarn here and I'm going to just join that. Just like this, oops, don't lose that tail. There we go. And like I said, I like to go and tie these into a knot here before I crochet over the yarn tails just so that way they're a little more secure. So I'm just going to do a quick little knot on this. Just like that. Now we can start working on our border. So we're just going to go into that stitch where we just um, attached our light green yarn. We're going to place a single crochet. Now we're going to single crochet all along the edge here, just like how we did with our small leaves for our snake plant just like this. And then when we get to the very tip, remember we're going to put three single crochet in that middle stitch right here and then work our way down that bottom edge or the other side and then along the bottom. And when we come back, we'll slip stitch to that first single crochet, 
fasten off and leave ourselves a long enough yarn tail to where we can attach all of our leaves to the um, top portion of our snake plant pot. All right, let's attach all of our leaves to the top of this portion of our flower pot. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of go around. I'm going to position them the way that I want them on here. Um, and you're going to have to like just kind of position them as you go. But what I'm going to do in order to attach this, and you want to leave plenty of room because remember you have those four medium sized leaves that we're attaching to as well. So I'm going to put all three of my smaller ones right here in the front and then I'm going to do the four medium ones more towards the back. So I'm just going to go from the bottom through the top here, back through the bottom. And I think I'm just going to whip stitch these in place here. Um, and like I said, you're just gonna have to try and work your way around, making sure that you kind of keep it to a point to where it's going to be standing up okay, because you don't want it falling back this way or laying this way. So you want it to kind of be standing up straight whenever you stitch these on. So it's probably gonna take a little bit of fiddling with this and take you a few minutes to get everything kind of put together and situated in a area that you would like to see how they want, how they are. So go ahead and work on that. Get all of these leaves attached to the top portion of your flower pot here. And then we'll come back, I'll show you how I'm going to attach this to the actual flower pot and then we'll get it stuffed with our fiber fill. So I'll see you back here in just a few minutes when we're all done and everything is fully attached. I have all of my leaves attached to the top portion here and you can see everywhere that I went under here and just wove in all my tails. Um, they're a little floppy right now, but once we actually get this attached to the flower pot portion, I'll show you what I am going to do to kind of like get them all stuck together um, and then keep them from like kind of flopping around. So what I want to do next is I'm going to take this here and I'm going to take my little um, flower pot and I'm going to just kind of line these up and I've got this big old long gray tail, the tail from the top portion here and I'm going to just get this here and I think what I'm going to do is um, single crochet these together all the way around until I get to about right here at this portion and I'm gonna leave a little bit of an opening right there so then that way I can add all of my fiber fill in there. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip this right here and then I'm just going to weave this in really quick. So then that way I can use this green yarn to single crochet it all together instead of doing, maybe instead of doing um, like just stitching it all together. I think the single crochet will end up looking a little bit nicer. So just take this and I'm just gonna go through, weave my yarn tails in. And I like to weave back and forth at least three times whenever I'm weaving my yarn tails in. So then that way they're nice and secure. It's not going to come undone. Um, I'm gonna give this to my daughter so she can put it in my grandson's nursery because they are big plant people. They love house plants and I thought this would be really cute in his room. So um, there we go, I got that. And now, now what we're going to do, I'm just gonna clip this off just like that, get rid of my yarn. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to, I think just use the back loop of this and the back loop of the flower pot right there. So just going through. And so let me zoom in a little bit for you so you can see a little bit better. So I'm just using the two back loops. So I'm gonna grab my yarn and then we'll weave this tail in here in a few minutes whenever we get everything totally attached. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one and now I'm just going to single crochet through these loops and I'm going to single crochet over this yarn tail just like this. And I'm just going to work my way all the way around this uh, right here. They should be the exact same size. So you're not gonna have to worry about 
making sure that they fit and everything like that because they should be the exact same size and the exact same amount of stitches all the way around. So go ahead and keep working your way around here, single crocheting, and then I'll meet you back in a few minutes and we'll get this little guy stuffed with a fiber fill and then um, we'll finish off the last few single crochet and then we'll be done with him. So I'll see you back here in just a few minutes. Okay, so I've got to the point to where I need to and I'm gonna grab some polyfill here. And I'm just going to take, and you can see I just kind of left a big loop and then I've got like this hole right there. I'm just gonna start taking and stuffing my polyfill in there. Um, you're gonna need quite a bit. I just happen to have a brand new bag of it but um, you probably would need just like a smaller little tiny bag for it, but you just be the judge. It's really gonna depend on how full you want your little um, flower pot to be. I want mine to be pretty full, so I'm going to continue to stuff him pretty good here because I want him to be really full and really cute and just really round and fat and everything like that. And you can see he's kind of starting to take place. So he's like actually very adorable. So let's take, I'm going to situate this maybe back over there because I want him to still, sorry, you can hear the dog, the corgi barking in the background. I think my husband's finally home from work today. Um, so I want to, just kind of move it around, get it situated in there the way I like it. And then I'm going to finish stitching up like single crocheting the rest of these holes, the rest of these stitches right here. And then once I'm done with that, then I'll meet you back and we'll take a look at how cute and adorable he is. Cause he's actually turning out really cute. And then I'll t um, show you how I'm going to actually like take care of the situation with the, um, keeping them from flopping around and all over the place and stuff. So I'll meet you back here in just a few minutes. All right. So I grabbed a long piece of the dark green yarn for a yarn tail and I threaded it on my needle back here. So what I'm going to do is kind of just bunch everything together and I'm just going to go through here and I'm just going to kind of stitch them together a little bit, situate them out a little bit. So then that way um, they're not flopping around all over the place. If you don't want to do it that way and you want to, it's fine if they just kind of like flop around because it kind of actually reminds me of like the veggie tails a little bit. So it's actually pretty cute, but um, I think I want to kind of keep them together a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that. And then um, once that is all done, then I will meet you back in a few minutes and we'll get, um, take a look at how cute he is now when, once he's going to be done. All right, and that is it. So we finished our Amigurumi crochet snake plant. I think he turned out super adorable. It's going to be perfect in my grandson's nursery, um, and especially since my daughter and son-in-law are houseplant um, people like I am. I know that he's probably going to be as well. Um, one little thing I would say, if this wasn't going to be for a nursery, you could probably use some, uh, like crafting wire or something like that. And whenever you're adding the light green along the edge, you could probably go ahead and do, um, crochet around the crafting wire and it would make the leaves stand up a lot easier. That'd be, would look really cute. So then that way you could actually position them the way that you want to. Um, and that's it. I hope you guys all enjoyed making this Armagurumi crochet pattern just as much as I did. Make sure that you like, comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel as it really helps me out a lot. Um, make sure you hit that notification bell as I'm posting tutorials here as often as I can. And that is everything. I love you guys all so very much and I will see you in my next video.